It's new product time, Anita. Yeah. So new product time, and um, we're gonna do something a little different this week. While you're getting set up over there, I'm gonna go to our other camera. Look at this, there's another camera over here. Ooh. This is a digitizer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a live scan, but before we do that, I'm gonna talk about what the digitizer is. The MakerBot digitizer is the new scanning system from MakerBot. Um, it scans things. Here's another view. Um, they have a little rabbit that they show. Look, you can scan in a rabbit from something <laughs> that uh, maybe you have a little statue of a rabbit and you want to scan it in and then put it on Thingiverse or manipulate it and then print it out and do different things. Um, it has a camera. It has lasers. <laughs> Here's a side view. Here's a top view. And here is the digitizer view. <laughs> so it comes with this uh, little thing here. This is how to calibrate it, by the way. Um, when you first get it, uh, you put it on there. But we're not going to do that. It's already calibrated. Um, I have a little Lego figure, a little Lady Ada Lego figure there. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn on the camera here. That's us. Hello. And what we're going to do is scan it in. OK, start. Continue. Well, in. well I've, already, I've, already scanned, I've already scanned in um, one thing. But um, scan. I'm going to do a new scan. So okay. um, for the folks uh, at home, um, right now on my screen, there is you the, can see the view of what it's yeah. seeing, but it's in red. Yeah. Because there's a filter. And uh, we're going to start to scan. So you'll see this and may probably hear this over the next uh, nine minutes. Um, that's about how long it takes. And you'll see the, the laser. And I'm going to actually move the camera and show you what's going on here. Let's make sure I didn't. Uh... Yeah, I can see the laser. OK. So there's the laser. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the little. Lady Ada Lego, and then there's the lasers. It's probably going to catch that uh, camera that you stuck. Yeah, in that's it. fine. But yeah, there's two laser lines, and they're at 45. They're at 90 degree angles, and then the webcam is looking at the lines. This is actually a really old technique that um, is used to to scan an item. It looks at the laser line, and uh, there's a filter on the webcam that looks for that red line. And when when you know by seeing how it deforms. Um, from an angle, it can make the outside shape of, it can figure out the outside shape of a 3D object. So I've seen like DIY scanners that do it this way and then you know the, the trick is just to have software that kind of takes all that together and uh, turns it into a mesh. That's actually kind of a little bit of the hard part. Um, and then yeah. Digitizer comes with software. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah so, it, it, so you can see it's slowly turning it one little step at a time, you know, probably like 1,000 times, and maybe it even does it twice just to get, uh, you know, two, two passes. Yep. And, uh, yeah. So we have those in the store now. And I'm going to let this run okay. um, while we do the rest of the new products. So okay. that's, that's going to be the noise in the background. Zip, 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 zip. OK, so next up, we have. Little bitty heat tanks. Little they tiny so heat teeny. tanks. Yeah. That's actually a really good photo because it's like so small, it's actually hard to see. Yeah, that's the back. There's a bunch of them. And then let's see um, how this goes here. Oh, oh, did you turn on the camera? Hold on. Hold on. One second. We have a new, we have a new overhead camera. camera. I, have to, I have to learn how to turn this on. Oh, sorry. It is not on. You're right. Yeah, we on. have, a, we have okay. a new overhead camera. In it's fact, now on. we're going to be upgrading all the cameras on Ask an Engineer because we're broadcasting in HD and we okay. have some, uh, we did a lot of research on the type of cameras we're going to migrate to, but it's all like Thunderbolt, it has to go through a There's special a encoder box. A converter is so tonight is the first time that we're actually going to try it as okay. an overhead camera. Just it to seems see what to be working. Okay. Yeah. Yay. So this is the little, um, it's such a teeny little uh, heat sink, but this is really good for little QFNs and stuff. It's even hard to. Um, uh, zoom in on it because it's so small. On the back, there's a little bit of tape. This is uh, 3M heat sink tape, so it's kind of handy. It comes in a pack of like 10 or so, and it, they're really inexpensive. They're just like 50 cents each. They're not like great heat sinks. I mean, they're small, but if you need something that fits into a small box, or you just need just a little bit more thermal thingy going on there. Because these are so small, you can stick them onto like, you know, QFNs, QFPs, BGAs, kind of anything. They're just Pretty straightforward, really easy to use, and uh, I like to have these little mini heat sinks because uh, my friend Waz was like, "Hey, you know, it's easy to get big heat sinks, but it's really hard to get small heat sinks. Like they're they're not as easy to get. But as we're going into small motor drivers and stuff, they're yeah. they're so teeny. You want to have a little heat sink to go with it. So, anyways, 
No, you can, you can, this is good. You can really see it. Yeah. Okay. Next up. Okay. Um, you can get this. Why don't you get the scarf right there? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. So this is a, a special product. Um, one of our employees, Jeff, and he's uh, he does the Art Tuesday uh, blog, and he does uh, the new product uh, curation with us. Um, he has. I'd like to call scarf. him the the glitch father. Um, he is one of the pioneers who uh, takes these uh, video game ROMs, dumps them, and turns them into textiles. Yeah, these are pretty cool. Yeah, so, so this, this is, is Jeff's work. It's custom made in Germany. Yeah, and, um, and they're, they're beautiful. By this, uh, by this factory that like makes like high-end wool scarves. It's super warm and comfy, even though it's not that thick. And it's a nice double-sided scarf. And uh, yeah, it looks cool. This might be the new style, by the way. So if you get these, like this will probably be really hot this winter because we've had a lot of the... Um, Black and white dazzle wear. Yeah. So I could see this being the next uh, next style glitch so, fabric. So yeah, here are some photos. You can see all the details. Very glitchy. Yeah, this one's mine. This is I'm taking Digo, this one. our CIO. Rissa again from Wearables. And here's a photo of Jeff. That's with the guy who makes these. With his glitches. Yeah. All right. So there was a request to have um, the digitizer. Um, in the uh, the upper corner, while we uh, continue. Can to you show. do it live? Yeah, I could do this live. Oh boy! I mean, I'll I'll put it like right over here. Yeah, do that. Yeah. So okay. um, your body's now a digitizer. Yeah. So now you can see the digitizer going on. Okay. <laughs> well, it's take, it's gonna take like three yeah. more minutes. Yeah. So that's the noise over there. But we'll keep going on new products. Okay. okay so next up we have the Mojo. Yay! This is the Mojo. Lots of photos of the mojo. And then we will uh, go to the overhead. Hold on, I'm getting it out of the silver bag. It's like exactly the same size as the silver bag. Okay, now for okay. this, you probably okay, want this, to. Okay, this, I'm uh, gonna uh, bring this out. Yeah. And then you're gonna also bring it out? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay, wow, look at us. Okay. And then. You wanna focus in? Oh, there you go, look at that. Well, oh. hold on. Sorry. Your uh, little My lighting. Your little lighting apparatus is getting in the way. Okay. All right. Uh, so yeah. So this is the um, Mojo FPGA board, and this is um, a, oops, this is a, a Kickstarter that we saw, um, and they uh, fulfilled all their. Um, whoa, sorry. They fulfilled all of the uh, the Kickstarter backers, and they're like, "Well, we have some more, and would you like to check this out?" So this is a um, FPGA board using a Xilinx Spartan 6 XC5 SLX9. And it's a pretty, it looks like a 256 pin or something uh, um, FPGA. It's also got an Atmega 32U4 on it. So it's kind of got a little bit of Arduino. Yeah. Leonardo action going over here and then FPGA action over here. The nice thing about having the the 32U4 is that it, it provides a USB interface and also analog digital converter. I mean, obviously you can do like any high speed, you know, video or, you know, if you have a DAC or ADC, you can do that off the FPGA, but the, you can, you know, just do it on the 32U4 and then um, use this for kind of the high end stuff. And what we really liked about this, because there's a lot of FPGA boards that I'm like, oh, okay, like it's another, yet another FPGA board. And we even carry the DEO Nano, which I actually like a lot. Uh, what I liked about this was the combination of the 32U4 chip, and also there's a lot of really good tutorials on the website. Um, it's really hard to get into FPGAs, and you know, oftentimes you have to buy like a $500 dev board from the maker. And well, what's nice about this is it comes with um, you know great uh, tutorials, diagrams, uh, you know, compiler stuff, everything you need to to get started. Yeah. So and it's like not that expensive; it's like eighty dollars. So. Yeah. It's kind of, I thought, the, the lowest cost, easiest to get started with FPGA board. So I'll check it out. A lot of people have been asking for more FPGA options, and okay. we provide them. What is an FPGA for people who just don't know? In very general terms, what oh, is it? Um, FPGA is a, a field programmable gate array, and it's basically an extremely low level way to program a chip. So with an Arduino or an embed or, or a mic other microcontroller, um, you'll be writing code often in C or you know, Java maybe, or Python, or like some higher level language, um, or Lua, whatever the, the higher level language is, maybe assembler. With an FPGA, you don't even use assembly. What you're actually doing is controlling the gates. And so it's a, it's a different way of doing stuff because instead of having a procedural programming where every command happens one after the other, like if this 
light the LED. If not, turn the motor. Yeah. That's procedural programming. Um, with an FPGA, instead of that, what you'll do is actually define all of your gates at once, and then you clock them. So it's, a, it's extremely high paral parallelized way of controlling a chip and allows you to get uh, extremely good performance out of it. But it, it's a little more difficult because it's, you know, once you know one microcontroller, you can program any microcontroller. But FPGAs, it's, it's so different that you actually need to learn how to do FPGA programming on its own. Gotcha. OK. So that's why having a really good dev board is key. You know, if you don't have a good dev board, it's like, OK, it's impossible, and I'm not getting any help. Yeah. This one, I feel like you get a hand in it. OK. Uh, next up, I think this is the star of the show today because so many people uh, really like this. This yeah. is our new ruler. Adafruit has a ruler. And here's we some rule. photos that we took. This is the front and the back. And this is a design by Frank. Yeah. One this PCB is... to ruler them all. So do you want to go to the overhead? Yeah, sure. All right. This is the right size for this. Oh, wait. Yeah, hold you'll on. probably want to focus a little bit. Hold on. I'm going to get this USB cable out of here. OK. And then I will focus. I'm still learning how to use this camera. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, it looks great. That's pretty good. OK. Um, so and then you can even zoom in if you want. Yeah, that'd be great. So yeah, this is a really lovely ruler. And uh, we were thinking maybe making some sort of like, because uh, you know, like we're, I'm always designing stuff. And you know, K-Town's designing uh, hardware here. And like having something to reference all the different sizes of components. And so I, I saw all these. Um, this is cool, but I want something with a little bit more stuff. And Frank was like, oh, I, I actually designed something like this in 2011 with my friend for school. And I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. Let's make one for Adafruit that's like, uses the parts that uh, we use here in the shop. So uh, it's really lovely. It's black mask with uh, a gold uh, plate on it. So it'll, it won't oxidize. Yeah. And um, there's a bunch of really cool shapes. So here is a QFP32 QF, uh, with a 0.5 millimeter pitch. Uh, 0.8 millimeter pitch, uh, QFPs, QFNs, BGAs of different sizes, TSOPs. Um, and then on the back, this is kind of where like the crazy action is. Um, there's a trace width collection. So from uh, 40 mil to 6 mil, um, the different RCL components from uh, 2010, 1210, 1206, 0805, 0606, 0302, 0201. You can barely even see the 0201s. Uh, different diodes from um, SMA, SMC down to SC79. Um, your classic SOT23s, SOT223s, D packs, um, D2 packs, SOT89s. A couple different crystal sizes. This is really important because I'm often uh, picking at crystals, and you're like, "Wow, the crystals that are really cheap are all HC49s, but they're huge." So keep that in mind. You might have to go to a smaller crystal. Um, some more TSOPs, SOICs, QFPs, QFNs. Um, and these are some nice little diagrams showing silkscreen options and sizes and uh, like transistor pinouts and stuff. And also up here we have uh, a wire gauge chart. I didn't actually bring any wire, but what you can do is if you're not sure how thick the wire is that you're using, you can stick them in the holes to see. And if it fits um, without being too tight, you know that that's pretty much the right gauge. This can be handy if you're like, you know, you have some wire or, or something that you want to figure out what the gauge is. Or you're trying to visualize how thick your wires are going to be if you get like 32 gauge or 18 gauge or 6 gauge. And then, of course, it's, it's a ruler. So we've got a centimeter, 10 centimeters down, or sorry, uh, 15 centimeters down here with the millimeter marks. And then we also have inches up here with the classic half quarter, eighth inch mark. So it's basically a six inch ruler. So I think this kind of covers like everything. It's really handy. I just have this on my desk and I'm like, yeah. I look at it like all the time. So I'm like, you know, how thick is 40 mil? Um, and we also have them in the shop. And uh, I don't know, I like this little ruler. It's, it's also a nice uh, standard thickness. Yeah. So it's, uh, cool it won't project. bend too much. Got a nice corner too. Yeah, someone asked if we're going to have that in our product photos. Um, no, because um, people would assume that every product came with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the problem. Like, that's, if, why, that's why there wasn't a quarter or a ruler next to the ruler, because I'm like, well, we don't need it, because it has measurements on it. But uh, the, the problem is we found that if, if there's anything in the photo other than a quarter, people think Yeah, we, we're always really clear. Some people, um, oddly enough, have complained <coughs> that they said there's a picture of a quarter. Um, I should get a quarter. And, that, uh, that, that's a tough and they, weren't, and they weren't kidding. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. okay are we done? That's new products. Okay. That is new products, Lady Ada.